Okay, thank you for invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Nice environment, nice place, nice people. <coughs> this is uh, a study we uh, have done with uh, a large group of uh, people that uh, help us very much with labs, with support, with financial support. <coughs> Hello. <coughs> Here uh, you have uh, the front page of the book that is uh, free and uh, you can take it after this speech. Uh, Ecuador is in South America between Colombia and Peru. <coughs> uh, the, um, mining activities in particular for uh, uh, gold mining is uh, uh, very important for many people uh, and uh, most of these activities are uh, on a small scale, formal or informal. Here you can see this is the entrance of the tunnel, this uh, person drilling, they are carrying the stones out of the tunnel, uh, moving the stones. They are uh, collecting the mineral after they mill it, and uh, then they use uh, uh, to uh, collect this mineral and to prepare with uh, uh, with mercury to mix with mercury. They made an amalgam. Uh, this is uh, something particular because they use some kind of sugar to uh, add to this uh, mixture, uh, thinking that it could improve the gold extraction. Uh, this is uh, uh, called the retorta. It's used uh, to burn the amalgam and uh, trying to uh, avoid that the uh, mercury vapors go out to the environment, but it's not used uh, too much. Uh, this is the place, the office of the people that uh, um, sell the gold, uh, the gold buyers, the people that uh, buy and sell gold, and they have uh, small offices where they burn <coughs> The miners come to these uh, offices, and uh, these people that buy this gold uh, need to burn it again because, as uh, there is uh, this gold is uh, containing mercury, and uh, as they pay for the weight of this uh, the small ball then they need to burn it several times to try to take out as much as possible the mercury uh, to pay less, to pay only for gold. Uh, this is uh, an, uh, another office, uh, but uh, this is uh, in particular important because these people live in this, in this place. Uh, in, uh, there are other uh, cases in which uh, people burn the amalgam outside uh, of their houses. Uh, this is an example of the uh, some kind of ventilation system that, of course, it doesn't work. It then uh, it doesn't extract all the mercury vapors from these offices that have very bad uh, ventilation. Here is a uh, gold buyer is waiting <coughs> and uh, they uh, they use this uh, uh, equipment to try to move to to get some ventilation after burning but of course it's not uh, too useful and uh, here is the ball that finally they buy <coughs> uh, we have done uh, different kind of uh, studies about different kind of uh, risk. We measure 
uh, silica dust, uh, uh, looking uh, uh, for some idea of the exposure. Uh, this uh, analysis were, uh, were done in Sweden. And uh, we prepare a questionnaire and uh, we did uh, some x-rays following the ILO uh, classification and uh, we found uh, we, um, we test uh, approximately 260 miners and uh, you can see that uh, sorry. And uh, we found a group of uh, these miners with uh, different uh, uh, preferen uh, prevalence of uh, silicosis. Uh, we uh, measure noise in s different parts of the tunnel, and uh, we found different uh, equivalent levels, and uh, we found uh, different uh, problem, different uh, disorders. Um, we follow the clock of uh, classification from Italy. And um, uh, it was important to see not only this neurosensory, uh, neurosensory deafness, but also some uh, other problems that are related with infectious disease. Uh, we measure mercury concentrations in air. We send these uh, um, uh, different filters and uh, uh, sorbent uh, tubes to Sweden. Uh, we use uh, passive dosimeters, personal samplers, uh, and uh, also dragger to try to have some profile of exposure in different uh, process in different moments in different areas. Um, perhaps it is important to uh, see this, that also at home we found uh, mercury. <coughs> uh, then, uh, well, we apply the questionnaire and uh, clinical uh, examination and uh, we look for some bio biomarkers. Uh, FINE was a project uh, with other countries and uh, to try to, to see what happened uh, around this uh, exposure to mercury. We found uh, that uh, uh, miners, uh, blood, <coughs> and uh, serum and urine, we measure in these uh, three uh, uh, samples, and uh, we found that uh, gold wires were the uh, most uh, exposed, and we had a reference group. Uh, uh, we found a, a significant difference uh, uh, in uh, mercury levels in urine between gold buyers and miners compared with the reference. And uh, uh, we look for the correlation uh, between mercury in blood, plasma, and urine. And uh, we saw a very good correlation between plasma and uh, uh, blood uh, uh, samples, but uh, also plasma and uh, urine and uh, uh, urine and blood. Uh, we look for some confounders. 
Uh, we ask about fish intake because uh, this uh, small scale production is in the coast and people take fishes in the river. <coughs> uh, and this uh, river uh, are collecting water from different areas of uh, mining uh, production. Uh, we look also for uh, amalgam fillings. Uh, this is uh, very important to try to identify the problems because as it is an uh, informal uh, production, we cannot, uh, it is not easy to standardize uh, the exposure. It is not easy to uh, really identify the moments and the uh, um, uh, what kind of exposure and how often they are exposed. So it was very important uh, to ask and to, to talk with the miners about uh, the last burning. Last burning is a key question because here uh, we can see that uh, uh, it decreases the presence of uh, mercury in urine and uh, we found that uh, after 50 days, in average, uh, we uh, are uh, looking for um, uh, is the uh, mercury is decreasing in, in urine. <coughs> this is uh, we look for some uh, genes, trying to identify the influence of some genes, uh, and we found that. There are uh, there is a gene that influence uh, the at this point uh, these uh, genes influence uh, the possibility to eliminate mercury. So it depends uh, if uh, people have more or less uh, um, influence of these genes. Uh, how time the, uh, how much time they have mercury uh, in uh, in their body <coughs> this 50 days is uh, in average and uh, it goes between uh, 32 days and 77 days and then it's very important because uh, we need to have a control of this uh, uh, decrease rate. Then uh, we use uh, the CATSIS uh, to look for tremor, balance, coordination, and uh, uh, we look for the uh, peripheral uh, uh, sensitivity. Uh, <coughs> we saw uh, different, not, signific uh, not uh, significant uh, uh, difference between the three groups, uh, but uh, uh, we found differences in the posture, in the balance, in particular in uh, uh, people that uh, more than 35 years. <coughs> Diado uh, cosinesis and uh, finger tapping also show some difference. Then uh, we uh, identify three groups of children of an uh, urban area, of a uh, rural area, and a mining area. Uh, we um <coughs> collect samples in the schools in these three, uh, three areas and we found uh, that uh, there are possible exposure sources like, like uh, polluted rivers, soil, some ag agricultural products, uh, and, uh, but there is a particular possibility of exposure that is coming uh, from exposure at home because very often miners take the amalgam at home and they burn it uh, inside and they close uh, the windows to protect uh, and to 
to a boy that people could see what are they doing and how much go they take. Um, <coughs> here you have a number of, of children of different areas. Uh, it was uh, uh, particularly important because uh, we uh, found high level of uh, mercury in, uh, in the children. Uh, also comparing with other countries that participate in the project, you know, uh, Ecuador was uh, got the highest uh, level of mercury in, in children. Uh, then it was China and other countries. Uh, of course, uh, it is not all over the country. We can say that it is like a worst case in the mining area in particular. Here we can see the difference uh, between the three areas where the uh, samples were uh, collected. And you can see that mining is uh, the place where we found the highest values. Uh, uh, some uh, interesting things is the uh, lead concentrations in blood in, uh, in children. Uh, because uh, uh, again, Ecuador, comparing with uh, six European countries, China and Morocco, uh, show the second uh, highest level. And uh, this is very important. We talk with our colleagues. Uh, where is the, this lead uh, coming from? And uh, one uh, possible source is uh, the presence of lead in the rocks. Uh, the lead in the dust, uh, but also because in the process they use some lead because they think that it improves the uh, gold extraction. And uh, they use uh, a substance called the litargilio that uh, seems to be as a lead acetate. <coughs> Uh, it was very important to see that the uh, parental occupation is one of the main determinants. When uh, parents are uh, minors, the presence and the higher the bi higher values are frequent. We found also toxic levels of mercury. Uh, here you can see women at work. Uh, they are called uh, hancheras. These people get uh, the rest of the stone that were processed and they do their own job, their own, own process, and they are uh, exposed. Sometimes they only sell the stone to the other miners. And uh, <coughs> here we can, see, uh, we can see again that women uh, from Ecuador have higher uh, levels of mercury in blood. Uh, but also um, women in uh, urban areas has uh, levels of mercury that should be considered. In summary, we can say that uh, uh, silicosis is present. Is, uh, the prevalence is uh, around 10%. Uh, problems with noise is uh, common. Uh, gold buyers are most uh, exposed, more than miners, because miners don't burn it each week or uh, uh, in a in uh, uh, permanent exposure. Uh, but the, the gold buyers are all the day receiving the miners with the bo gold, mi bo gold balls, and they need to burn it several times. Then they are more exposed. Uh, genotypes uh, are play some role. And uh, the problem with children and women is particularly important. 
<coughs> as a conclusion, uh, we want to uh, uh, to say that um, we identify uh, that uh, there, are, there is an occupational exposure, but also an uh, environmental exposure. Because when we find women and children uh, in the uh, towns around the main in areas, that probably uh, their parents are not working with uh, uh, mining activities, but they have some uh, increase in, this, uh, in the presence of mercury in blood. Uh, looking for uh, some solution or to, uh, to try to solve some problems, uh, we saw that social and cultural aspect should be considered because uh, it, uh, we need a uh, um, uh, possibility to keep in touch with the uh, culture of the people because uh, we can say that it, that is not a technical approach, that is not a scientific, but the uh, this uh, kind of approach uh, very often doesn't uh, um, get the result we think it could uh, give us. So uh, I remember yesterday the very important uh, presentation of uh, our colleagues uh, Water from uh, uh, United Kingdom, and uh, I can say that uh, uh, we need to find some <coughs> way to let people to participate uh, and to talk and to try to uh, understand uh, what are uh, we uh, what uh, uh, we propose and uh, how to um, identify the problems and not in a vertical way in which uh, we are saying that that is science and the other things are not scientific and so on. And uh, uh, then to participate could be a very important uh, a way to, uh, to approach and to, to know what people think and how to do it better and uh, to help them to have some organizations because uh, isolated miners uh, cannot really improve their own process. They need a, a social environment uh, and uh, uh, good uh, conditions and uh, to work in a democratic way. And uh, um, in general, we can say that uh, we need to get result an holistic approach because uh, there are some also some anthropological questions that uh, should be understood uh, um, by us and uh, must be included in the programs, in the projects uh, we try to develop uh, in the field. Thank you. <laughs>